if that continues to verify and what that means for us and well for all of Florida actually. So Steve, we'll let you just go ahead and take it away. Yeah, this is interesting. It just made landfall on the northern coast of Cuba as a category five hurricane and uh, it is expected to track right along the north coast of Cuba the next six to 12 hours. Uh, there's really not much uh, weakening uh, taking place. Well, in fact, it's category five at this point, and uh, it is uh, just a few hundred miles away from South Florida at this point, and it's going to track uh, almost due west uh, through the overnight hours. There's a look at the timeline, a little under 300 miles away from our coast, and there is a look at the landfall spot. I zoomed in a few minutes ago because it was obvious that it was making a landfall. Landfall is defined at when the center of the eye crosses land. So it did the, you know, the outer, the barrier islands of northern Cuba uh, crossing there, and it is expected to just kind of continue along the coast, hugging the coastline through the overnight hours. Now here's the latest forecast. So we have a uh, hurricane out 160 miles an hour. A category five hurricane once again in the forecast track paralleling the coast right into Saturday evening and then that turn back to the coast and it looks like this track is shifted a little bit to the west. We're now closer to Key West as a category four. That is Sunday morning and then taking the storm. Uh, it, yeah, this track is farther west. It's adjusted a little to the west even tonight. There is Sunday at 8 p.m. And here's the other thing. Again, it's delayed in its arrival across Florida. So this this position was farther north earlier. So that's 8 p.m. Sunday and very close to Fort Myers and then through the evening. So our peak weather conditions will be Sunday evening and overnight as the storm moves from Fort Myers up in toward Tampa and then eventually it moves up into Georgia after that. It, so it weakens from a category four as it makes landfall on the mainland, travels right up uh, along the west coast of Florida. And by the time it makes it into Georgia, it's a tropical storm after that. What a, a, an amazing uh, track for this storm. And here are the computer model tracks tonight. And the Hurricane Center, as I said, has adjusted a little farther to the uh, west, right? Pretty much right over Fort Myers as a category four hurricane. And that is Sunday evening. That is the 8 p.m. Sunday position. And the model tracks, uh, you know, there's not, they're not as tightly clustered as they were earlier, but honestly pretty good for this far out in the uh, storm. Now here's the uh, tropical storm force wind arrival times. So we're looking at uh, overnight Saturday into Sunday. They spread across the area and the core winds they arrive on Sunday around 6 p.m. through the overnight hours on Sunday and early Monday. We're picking up some rainfall already on the Treasure Coast, some torrential uh, rains, but the real outer edge of this storm is still off the coast and uh, it's working now through Andros and also pushing up toward Grand Bahama that will arrive overnight and we are looking at some soaking rains coming in but this is all just kind of enhanced ahead of the storm and the heaviest is finally starting to settle down just a little bit we had some really big downpours earlier all right let's look at our probabilities of uh, tropical storm force winds along the coastline and back around the lake 80 to 90 to almost 100 percent so those are winds of 39 miles an hour stronger through Sunday and Monday night. So this is going to be a Sunday event for and Sunday night event for just about everyone. And there's a look at the new numbers for the hurricane force wind probability 72% now for Fort Myers and about the same for our area along the coastline and actually back around the lake. These numbers really haven't changed much at all, but that has changed. Fort Myers looking at a uh, almost um, well, 70 to 80 percent chance of those uh, strong winds at 74 miles an hour or stronger. The uh, storm surge as the track continues to shift west, these numbers continue to fall. So about one to three feet is the forecast right now. That may be adjusted a little to the south. Here's our in-house Viper uh, model. And even though it shifts west, uh, I'll remind everyone, Sunday is going to be a, a interesting day here with heavy rainfall. Very strong winds, uh, hurricane force wind gusts are still possible here. Certainly tropical storm force winds, and we are looking in some spots of perhaps over a foot of rain from this. What's going to happen is because it's spinning counterclockwise, it's going to tap in to the Gulf Stream waters, and Sunday is just massive amounts of rain. This is just one computer model. Actually, this is on the low side, to be honest with you. Uh, this, uh, this model here is showing about 8 to 12 inches of rain through Sunday night. 
we will probably add to that a little bit. We'll see a foot of rain in spots. So yeah, Sunday is, a, is going to be um, a wild weather day here, even though the storm shifts west. So here's a look at the breakdown for tonight. We have the hurricane warning, torrential rains, and also gusty winds out there too. And uh, as we get into tomorrow, we're looking at uh, the winds picking up even more and rain squalls, those uh, outer feeder bands coming in and rough sea conditions along the coastline. And that storm surge begins to peak late Sunday evening and into Sunday night with some of the strongest winds coming in. Here's a look at Saturday night. Tropical storm force winds possible. This may well, this is maybe more toward uh, overnight and into early Sunday. We've been watching the delay of everything and that trend continues. So uh, earlier this was a Sunday afternoon and early evening event. Now it's looking like a Sunday night overnight and early Monday uh, for peak winds and peak rain. So that timeline is still changing, but the track is also shifted west a little too, which is important. And Steve, for many in our communities, certainly South Florida, as we think of Miami with loved ones in Cuba, can you go back to that map and talk a little more about the impact? I've traveled there a good bit and you're looking at, it seemed to me the Comaway region, Santa Clara, yes. Veradero Beach, which has been historically popular the last 10 or 15 years with tourists. I mean, they're taking a big, big blow there. Can you talk a little bit more there about the impact as it's skirting the coastline there? Yeah, so that, that's 160 60 mile an hour winds right now, and that's the landfall. So the center of the storm has just crossed some of those barrier islands, and this is uh, this is not going to be good because it, it doesn't move inland and weakens. It just stays as a Category wow. Five along the north coast right through the overnight hours, and it doesn't get off the coast until tomorrow. So that's uh, that's that is there. Worst case, our worst case scenario is a, a category five coming from Miami and paralleling the coast all the way up through Daytona and Jacksonville. This is their worst case scenario where they have a category five, 160 mile an hour winds right along the coastline overnight as it heads toward Havana mm -hmm. and uh, that area. The capital city of Havana. So then, Steve, that, that does uh, weaken the storm enough to where it looks like you're saying then for the Keys, uh, Category 4, uh, making landfall there. Talk about that difference that that 20 or so mile an hour difference makes and what that likely looks like for the Keys or Key West. All right, well, let's take a look at the wind speed. So it, it emerges off the north coast of Cuba. That is Saturday evening. So a little less than 20, a little more than 24, no, a little less than 24 hours from now, and it's 155. So this is almost a category five still. So they are, the forecast is, is, is essentially for a category five hurricane for 24 hours oh, along wow. the coast of Cuba. And it comes off the coast. Remember category five is 157. So we're, we're two miles an hour uh, mm -hmm. lower than that. And then we head toward, well, now we're talking low, really lower keys around Key West, 150 mile an hour winds. So that's Sunday morning, that is uh, eight in the morning. Remember earlier, it looked like the uh, landfall in the keys would be around six in the morning, uh, maybe five in the morning. Now it's more like eight. So everything's getting pushed back again by a couple of hours. And then it comes in at uh, four with a second landfall. Well, you know, Naples, Fort Myers area, and, and obviously this is uh, category four and five hurricanes. The, uh, the, the damage is widespread and it is uh, extensive. And actually looking at this chart here, look at what else happens. I'm just noticing this for the first time myself. A large area of our viewing area is now out of the cone of this hurricane uh, on the Treasure Coast and Palm Beach County and Broward and Miami. Uh, pretty much well, even west of 441, I mean, a lot of the area is now out of the cone. Now, that does not mean that we're not going to get any kind of weather here. Sunday still looks really, really nasty as far as uh, winds and rain, but uh, that's encouraging, too, that uh, we're finally getting out of uh, at least somewhat of the cone. And uh, that, that's going to, that trend's going to continue. So the next uh, the update at 5 a.m., I suspect will almost be out of the lake or very close to it. Well, that was my next question was then because it raking over Cuba and then having a shorter distance between Cuba and the Keys, uh, you know, is there the opportunity for that windshield wiper that you've been telling us about to kind of swing back? I think we're all just like, sure. what's going to happen next? What well, could happen? Well, yeah, now we, but the, now when you think about it, we've had since 5 a.m., we've had 5 a.m., 11 a.m., 5 p.m., 11 p.m., 
and consistently shifts to the west. It's a very unusual track for a hurricane to come out of the Leeward Islands and track along the southern Bahamas and not turn um, and, and turn off our coast and then go up the east coast toward the Carolinas. It's, it's very rare for a storm to track into the Gulf of Mexico or very close to it, which this one will do. So it's very unusual. It's, uh, this, is go this could end up uh, very much like Donna back in 1960. I showed mm -hmm. it earlier in the week mm -hmm. where it, it comes uh, down. Donna, I don't think made a landfall in Cuba, but it came through the Florida Straits and then wrapped back around and made this uh, landfall around Fort Myers and then up the coast. This is, this is turning out to be very similar to that. It, that's a famous Florida hurricane back in 1960, and this is a very similar track. You know, we look at it on the map, and then you start realizing all the lives. I mean, this is turning into an historically mm -hmm. catastrophic storm for the Caribbean, which will be mm -hmm. in need of international right. aid. Cuba, an island of 11 million people, the Florida Keys, and a good chunk of Florida in the path of a storm that when you look at that path and you start mm -hmm. thinking of the people there, I mean, it gives you chills to think about uh, what we're going to be experiencing on the mainland of Florida uh, in the next few days, something that, again, it bears repeating. Steve, you've talked about it a lot. It's the scenario that they always have dreaded the most, a south to north hurricane along this hugely populated peninsula after ripping through the Caribbean. And, you know, there but, with the grace of God, go I. It could have been the East Coast. And, yes, and, yeah. and I know it could yeah. still, how much could it still change? I guess well, that's my other question. Uh, well, let's go back to the, the I'll advance it just a little here. Let's show that error cone. So there's our track out uh, across Cuba and then into the Keys. And now here's, here's why the error cone is here. Well, the error cone is saying that this point here could still be at, well, let's bring up our viewing area be a better description here. So it, it's saying that this point here could still be in Palm Beach County. That is still possible. And the hurricane force winds stretch out 60, 70 miles. So you could still get a significant hurricane coming through Palm Beach County. That's that's still possible. This this cone really has to move more to the west to, to really see a dramatic difference in the weather here. But this is the most likely track and it obviously very encouraging that we're starting to drop out of some of the uh, the highest threat, but if that if this obviously is here, we have a Category Four in Palm Beach County, so th there's still that chance. But with four consecutive now tracks, each one shifting it west, uh, it is looking certainly uh, better for us. Not completely out of the woods, but definitely better. Steve, is there any chance that it could perhaps, of course, if it moved further west, then somebody else on the Gulf Coast gets it? But I do have to ask for our friends and neighbors in Southwest Florida right now. Is there any chance uh, with the dynamics of what's going on with the trough and the Bermuda High you've talked about all week that you uh, could see a trend line still and we could at least hope that it might move farther west still? Well, I'm going to say something really strange uh, and I'm going to explain why, uh, but a track a little farther west may be actually worse for them okay. because that will increase the storm the surge. Storm surge. Sure. Because if you have a track that comes in more like this, and it won't take much actually to shift a little more to the west. So you have a track coming in, either Tampa or Fort Myers, all of this water sure. float. This is the most susceptible area of storm surge in the entire state of Florida, mm -hmm. around Fort Myers and Naples. You go miles and miles and miles into them with a category four or five. So that is the significant threat. In this case, there's not that big uh, fetch uh, where the, the wind is traveling over a large mm -hmm. area of water. But if this is here, if this center is here, then it has a chance of dragging all this water in toward uh, Fort Myers and Naples. And that, that is a worst case scenario. So I, I know it sounds weird to say that no. uh, no, to have it here than here, but it, if storm surge is the greatest threat for loss of life in a hurricane, mm -hmm. and having a track right here would be actually worse than having it over the area. It's human nature to see that cone, Steve, and to want to go. What is your bottom line message to our viewers? We'll be up mm -hmm. with you 24-7, but to those of you who are going to get a little nap time, if you can, during the night, what's your bottom line message to the viewers in our community right now? Well, uh, certainly through the entire day, it's been um, a, a big improvement. I mean, we, we could have seen tracks go the other direction today. It is still going to be a big weather event for us on Sunday. The timeline's a little bit uh, delayed compared to earlier today, and now it looks like our peak winds and rain will be Sunday evening, but they will develop during the day Sunday and spread from the north 
or from the south toward the north. So Sunday is still a big day for us, and uh, James is adjusting some of the uh, the the peak winds and the rain, but it looks like we could still see almost a foot of rain here by Sunday evening, early Monday, and that will cause some flooding and certainly the tropical storm force winds stretch out almost 200 miles from the center. So we're still looking at the threat of power outages. Whenever you get, whenever you start getting 50 and 60 mile an hour winds, you're, you're going to have the chance for some widespread power outages. You're not going to have the threat of um, a, a structural damage like you would. Like this area is under the width right now. I mean, category four is, category, that, that's Charlie. That's a Charlie mm. type storm, mm -hmm. which, and we saw some of the damage from Charlie and brick buildings mm -hmm. start to, to fail yeah. with uh, category fours and fives. Yeah, I was over there for Charlie when it hit. It was devastating. Yeah, it certainly was. All right, Steve, um, anything else? No, I d just uh, just that it's you know, I'm cautiously optimistic, and okay. it's certainly I mean you can't ignore the fact that the track continues to shift west, and uh, this is another reason why we tell people don't evacuate to the west coast of Florida, especially with this storm, because uh, you know track sh track shift, and these people here uh, this looked like us a couple of days ago. Certainly did. You bring up.